Hello, everyone. Welcome to Word Funk. I am Leon Thomas. I am joined by Austin Yorsky and Johnny Maloney. How are you guys feeling this week? I feel old. Oh. <laughs> what do you think we were going to say? Have we ever shot out to an episode and be like, great, Leon, we just do all kinds of fun stuff? It's like basically the fucking baton death march every week. What is it's 2018, Leon. <laughs> I understand, but like uh, you know, every once in a while, one would assume that you had like a really good week, and you're like, "Guess what? All the cool stuff I did." I had a I had a productive week, but I think that okay. that ties into me feeling kind of old. I don't like I'm not no. old like like I feel you know a, a man out of time or anything like I <laughs> physically speaking I feel old. Like I feel yeah. like I should probably have a doctor's appointment. In my near future. Okay. Even though I did that like a year ago and the doctor was like, you great. <laughs> I, f- I feel like the last year had may have may have done some things to me. So I'm tired and I'm yeah. sore and I had a very busy day today. And it was like it was it was like move, go, things to do. Got to get to, I don't know, Mars. Like we should. Like lift the thing and then throw it on the weight thing, and then the door opens, and then you run in and make an impassioned speech to the king. And then, like, I came home. I I got home like a little more than an hour ago, and I I sat down to take my shoes off, and it was just done. Mm. Like I'm I'm right now I'm 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 trying to muster optimism for having the energy to cook dinner in a little while. All right, that's like that's that's how old I feel right now. Is that I'm like I don't know if I can feed myself anymore. I think I'm gonna have to hire somebody for the evening. All I, right. I don't suppose either one of you guys is willing to put me to bed. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I'm I'm way the hell over here. Uh, how so much I, longer I, can this go on for, guys? I don't think <laughs> we're gonna make it. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, uh, it's every day. It's every day uh, I'm expected to get up and do stuff, and I just can't anymore. Yeah. So you're also tired? It's too uh, much. Also. And yeah. yet, I mean, you know, we probably should take some degree of optimism from the fact that we endure. Sure. I had, I'd like, this, I, I mean, you know, in other fantastic news, I, a, a friend of a friend uh, um, yeah. uh, uh, ended his life. Just this this past week, oh, uh, and that I'm was. Sorry. I I I haven't known him. I hadn't known him personally, but but one of my one of my oldest friends uh, that's kind of still currently active in my life, and yeah. also Steph, my ex, uh, yeah. were both very good friends with this young man. So yeah. that was a uh, that was a thing. So we're still we're still in it. We're still kicking. But man, is it is right. it tiring but you're great right leon no i had a really bad day oh, no. but like ev- but every other day besides today is usually really good for me so i you know uh, i just i had i had you know I, i'm allowed to have like one bad day uh i guess every once in a while and still say that my life is really good. You're al- you're allowed so. to have more than than just one bad day. You no, know? there's not no, like no, there's, I, there's no strict <laughs> allotment thing. I think that I've managed to prove that over the last year is that there's a there's a very generous allowance of how many bad days you can have. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 totally fair. Um, so, uh, what would you guys like to talk about this week? I have I have a topic that I'm not sure if I even want to broach. And, like, a bunch of meaningless uh, BS, really. Uh, so, like, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a bad way uh, f- today, and it just happens to be the day we press record to, to do this. Um, but if either of you have, like, any, uh, like, specific topics you would like to bring up, like, like the spotlight is on you, uh, definitely not me right now. I want to hear about Johnny. Our, okay. Uh <laughs> How I, went, are you? I went for a walk on the weekend. Nice. Damn, that sounds cool. It was that's, <laughs> uh, that's it's just that's un- uncharacteristic of me, you know. Like mm-hmm. I, I just I don't I'm not I'm not much of a like when I get home when I get home from work I'm I'm usually quite tired, 
So I'm sort of like, nah, and I'm in for the night. Unless it's like, oh, no, you know, you really should find time to exercise. But then I'm, it's not like, oh, I'll go for a walk. It's like, no, nah, I'm going to drive out to a kung fu school and, like, punch at people and kick and jump at things. And, like, woo. So I, I went for a walk. I was feeling really anxious on Sunday. And I was just, like, pacing around my apartment, like, Bleh. And I went for a walk to a really beautiful vista, actually, that overlooked uh, um, uh, North Vancouver and, and the, the um, uh, Iron Workers Memorial Bridge. And in the distance, there was, like, Stanley Park. I was like, wow, walks kind of rule. Because <laughs> um, I live in a very scenic city. It was beautiful. Um, and, and that was nice. That was, like, it was, it was neat to get out of my headspace. Um, and then I, I promptly came home and started watching a Netflix documentary series called Dirty Money, um, which just, like, depressed the fuck out of me again, except for one one particular episode. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. All right. So have, you, have either of you heard of it or seen it? <clears throat> Dirty Money? No? No. Okay. No, sorry. So it's it like it, it's it's a it's it's uh, each episode is is roughly around an hour long, but it's mostly about financial related scandals and debacles and things like that. So like the mm-hmm. first episode is about uh, when Volkswagen falsified their um, their emission statistics from their like TDI air quotes clean diesel car that they released to America. And it's like, yeah, you know, people in Volkswagen fucking, like, knew they were lying about this shit. But everybody's like, well, I didn't know we were lying about this. Or did you know? Oh, no, man. Had no idea we were lying about this. And then, like, you know, uh, there's another episode about, like, the rise of, of payday loan companies in America. And, like, the skeevy business practices around payday loans. And uh, there's another one about, like, uh, about... Pharma price jacking, like Martin Shkreli, except it's about a very specific company called like Valiant Pharmaceuticals, and like they do, they do an episode about Trump, about Donald Trump as well, um, and um, and one more that I can't remember, but like it was just it was beautiful because I got to episode f- oh yeah sorry the the yeah the fifth one was was HSBC. Um, the the Bank of Hong Kong being basically busted in America for like laundering money for terrorist groups and drug lords and things like that. It's it's a really well done documentary series. But I got to the I got to the fifth episode, and, <laughs> and it was just like, hey, remember that time when somebody stole eighteen million dollars worth of maple syrup out of Canada? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, really? Like, is is that what we're? That's what we're gonna go after? Like, you've got you know people's lives are being ruined because of payday loans and like people who who are like on life saving drugs who you know go from paying like ten dollars a bottle to like." you know, $20,000 a bottle overnight because the wrong pharmaceutical pharmaceutical company, like, buys the drug and shit like that. And it gets to Canada, and it's like, yeah, somebody stole $18 million worth of pancake syrup. (laughs) And it's just like, oh, it was, um, like, you know, I mean, the, the like, this particular episode goes a little deeper than that about, like, why there was just, in the first place, $18 million worth of maple syrup just sitting around in a place to be stolen, and why maple syrup could be accrued in amounts at values that would allow it to be valued at $18 million. But it was, it was, um... It made me laugh. I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, if I didn't really know much about Canada and and this was like one of those things where it's like, let's take a let's take a deep, dark look into the seedy underbelly of the Canadian maple syrup black market trade. I, I think... just I, I Googled stolen alligator to uh-huh. see if there was a stereotypical Florida heist. Uh huh. It- and Google tells me that there was one stolen uh, last year, but it was in Arkansas. Well, I mean, that kind of makes sense in a certain 
like Does in, it? if you well yeah if you think about it in a certain way because why would you have to steal an alligator in Florida? Why would you have to steal maple syrup in Canada? Because because they hoard it. Do they? Yeah. This is well. This is part of the part of the thing about the episode is that they talk about how like the, and I just like I'm sorry, but you know they talk to a guy who whose title is actually like on. <laughs> On on film, they show it. They show his name, and then his title underneath is Maple Syrup Lawyer. <laughs> Goals. Um, yeah. So the story the story goes that like back in the 1980s and things like that, like the maple syrup market crashed and nobody was making any money, and it was just like you know, it, it was it was a wreck. It was terrible. When a bunch of uh, maple syrup producers all got together and decided to form a federation. And so, the, like, the Federation of Maple Syrup Producers just grasps maple syrup production in Quebec with an iron fist. And, you know, it, 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 it yeah, so it talks about how, like, they, they basically, in good yield years, they only release a certain amount of maple syrup to the market, and then they store the rest. So that in bad yield years, they can release the same amount of maple syrup to the market, so the price doesn't fluctuate. And over the last, like, 15 years or so, basically, they have forced the price of maple syrup sky high while, like, clamping down on independent producer's ability to to sell um like any maple syrup not just inside the province but outside as well and they talk to like maple syrup bootleggers and like like you could if you changed every title or like every every sentence from like maple syrup to like moonshine and like racked the dates back to like the 1920s or something like that it it could be like a really interesting story but instead it's like modern day and maple syrup um it's yeah so that's like i don't know that you know i feel like if somebody was going to do like a typical florida heist it would probably be something a little bit more like like um undershirts I mean, like, first of all, I just want to say Arkansas is landlocked. So where is the alligator even? It, Second well, of all, that's, and, and that's the thing, and that's why you would want to steal an alligator in Arkansas because, like, obviously they're thin on the ground. You can't just like trip over one and be like, "I'm taking you home." Second of all, when you mentioned the the maple syrup like hoarding thing, that sounds like the Florida orange juice industry where they juice all those suckers and then like f- basically freeze it for like, you know potentially years. However, you know the market needs, right. which is different than syrup, which keeps for a very long time. I a mean, very orange... long time. And the, you... one of the reasons apparently why they only noticed that this much was was stolen was because <laughs> the metal barrels in which they stored maple syrup started weeping so like condensation started forming around the outside and some guy in the warehouse was like wait a minute maple syrup barrels don't weep and then the cops showed up and opened up all these barrels and somebody had like substituted them for waters there was like water filled barrels there was like a ringer heist I and like it's I, I it's relic it was ridiculously over over complicated and super detailed from what you think a, a maple syrup heist might be, but I think I I think I've heard of that before. Like it, it made the news. It did. It made international news, and we all looked so quaint as Canadians. We did. But yeah, if you if you drink orange juice, everyone, uh, it's probably was juiced like years ago. It's like creepy zombie juice that's been reconstituted where cyberpunk is here and it sucks it's it's what that mm. from concentrate underneath says oh is that's like ah you have preserved this and stored it so that future generations might sup of that magical year of orange juice 1997 Okay. It was I've... it was a tart year, Austin, as I recall. But the pulp I... <laughs> flowed plentiful. And I just wasn't prepared for you to say "sup" in that context. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. Um, this is not a, this is a new fact for me. All the, this stuff about uh, orange juice. So I don't, uh, I don't know how to take this. I mean, I'm not going to stop drinking orange juice, 
uh, because of it. Mm-hmm. It's just um, it it adds an unusual new dimension to it to think that the orange juice I'm drinking, um, you know, did not yet lose its innocence in nine eleven or something. Jesus, are you a, are you so... a pulp man, Leon, or are you a no I, oh, I definitely man. am. Yeah, pulp is everything to me. I mean, you can, you can get fresh. You just need to get in season, right? Because oranges aren't right ready year round. Yet you can buy it year round, which I think should right. be the tip off. I feel like yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. But that, that does make sense as when you say it out loud. It's just it's just like. Uh, orange juice is just so like it's everywhere mm-hmm. it, it, and that I, I it's just I never questioned it it's like air it's like where's all this air coming from it's, it's just, for some reason it, I never thought about it and but yeah that is uh that is fascinating and scary it's, it's also almost I like mean, we've it, warped all of society to serve uh, consumer markets it's weird yep. Just whip it right, right, right back around, Austin. But uh, like, I don't think I don't think your way of thinking that Leon is necessarily flawed because out of season you can still pretty much get anything, like almost yeah, anywhere. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I drink cranberry juice all the time. I don't know exactly no. when cranberries are in or out of season. But not but even like... not even juice. I mean, like you know, yeah. that's like saying I went to the grocery store today, and you know what? They didn't have any oranges. <laughs> like that yeah. no that doesn't happen i mean if it does though it makes the news and people throw a fit yeah <clears> that <throat> we're we're very spoiled and very entitled and also very dying so i don't know if it comes out in the wash at some point there has to be some sort of balancing act i don't know where but um, do you guys want to talk about other stuff i want to talk about the chicken shortage that's going on right now <laughs> <laughs> is is that real or is I, that a punchline yeah, of this bit? I, that is actually, actually that, that is, is real, believe it or not. That cool. Yeah, that's actually something I know about. Um because I heard it on NPR today. Uh uh apparently it, it's I, I don't know if it's it's everywhere, but it's definitely happening in England right now and they're upset. And the, sorry, I like I think I should be a little more specific about this. This isn't this isn't just like a chicken shortage. It's not just like there are no more chickens, but like very specifically KFC is is having a problem uh uh getting their chicken to uh to British uh customers. I I like they I They killed all of them. I yeah, well that's <laughs> that is a huge problem when your product is um uh something that you kill as opposed to you know yeah exploit like i mean egg industry (laughs) chicken accounts for like 90 percent of meat consumption or something it's like wicked high it's like almost all of it and we i mean that's even taking into account we've selectively bred these things to be like all like basically mutant meat monsters that can't stand or like clean themselves and like their limbs are broken their entire lives and it's like a nightmare terror show um, and that's still not enough to meet demand. Like we've talked about vegetarianism before on this show, and I think Leon, you you are or were or have been, and I've I've flirted with it, and it's something I wish I could stick to. I think it, it's the it's the right thing to do, but we as like a human society, uh, we can't. <laughs> we've gone, we've gone too far. <laughs> it's it's, we screwed. it's bad. We yeah. We it, sort of industrialized like... farming is is a uh, is a dead end street. It, like it absolutely is. Industrialized farming is a totally dead end street. I don't like. I don't want to go so far as to say that like vegetarian or or veganism is like the only option for the future. But if omnivores are gonna survive, something has to change, very specifically about the way we farm uh, um, uh, animals, livestock. Maybe insects instead. I'm down with that. Like I'm I'm down with with alternatives. I want to grow meat on wires. Because because they can they can do that. No, I know they okay. can three D print limbs. Like, listen, the future is fucking here. It's just it's also it it's it's hard to take seriously for some reason. Like when we grew up on media that showed us all these cool things, but now it's here and it just it all feels like weird, uh, you know, hyper real farce. Mm. I don't know exactly what it is, but I we I feel like everyone's so alienated from everything and everyone. That none of it feels quite real, and also you don't feel the effects unless you're, you know, in a certain position to do so. Usually, uh, you know, people who enjoy the the new bionic limbs and stuff aren't us. So mm-hmm. I also yeah, want to. Like, I also want to just as a quick aside. I want to say that um, we also have to manage waste, like food waste. 
in terms of food that goes off in, in grocery stores mm-hmm. and, and just gets like thrown out. Like we need to we need to stop seeing food as like assets as as like financial assets, I think, after a certain point in time. And then just be like, Oh yeah. This is like the right to live. Yep. Cause I like I don't even remember like I can't remember when, but there was some some story that I read years back, years ago, about some like grocery chain that, that went out of business somewhere in the United States and they they like they had to close their doors suddenly because like the bank had, had, had seized their property and the bank was like, We're not gonna fucking like pay employees to like stick around for a week and sell all this shrimp so like they actually had to hire like an armed security force to go in and like confiscate the food so they could throw it out like uh, 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 what I know you you couldn't like you couldn't think of a better thing to do with a bunch of Food that you weren't going to use? Like, I wish I could remember the details. Maybe I'll Google it later when somebody else is talking. Um, anyways, the moral of the story is if you want to get depressed, uh, dirty <laughs> money is a great way to do it. Or just thinking or living, existing, reading the news, reading Facebook, reading Twitter, reading, talking. <laughs> yeah, but Austin, some people just need an extra push. Like, some people just need to sit down for an hour and be like, okay, so get this. This is why if you ever get sick and need to buy drugs, you're fucked. Okay, we have to be positive for a little bit. I'm going to throw some positivity in here. Okay. I was trying to be positive. It was a good series. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. I just feel like at this point, people need it. Like, why are they going to come listen to this if, <laughs> if we're just pummeling them every week? Yeah. We my, keep... my topic is weird and uncomfortable, so uh-huh. why don't you just take it? Hey, that's my brand. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's become all of our brand in a way. Um, so I have some uh, Law Corner, and at some point, I don't know if you want to do it after the questions, I do want to talk about Black Panther. Okay. Um, have you all seen it? I have. Yeah. No, no. I, I was Steph and I were gonna go, but oh. they're busy, and I'm uh, waiting for them to not be busy. So I think it's gonna be like another week and a half or something before we get a chance. Okay. How do you feel about spoiler talk? Obviously, for you and audience, we can time code these things, but I don't. I don't mind at all. Like, you know, for me, the art in movies is not being like, he was the killer all along. There but, aren't that many. Oh God. There aren't that I many love plot le- twists. <laughs> yeah. I love learning who the killer was all along. Um, <laughs> it's everything. Okay. But uh, I mean, uh, go, go the, villain, right the villain's on the poster and it's a Marvel movie. No, I know so you know what happens. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about Black Panther. It fucking ruled. It was awesome. Um, I saw you tweet, Leon, that you thought it was okay, which is your opinion on pretty much almost every Marvel movie, except I think Doctor Strange, which you hated. Oh, Doctor Strange is a great big piece of shit. Okay. Um, and Winter Soldier is a good movie. Oh, okay. Um, so Black Panther, where do you want to start? Because I think there's like three or four different layers. <laughs> there's just like the text of the film as just like a superhero movie, which it, which I agree with you is just fine. And then I think yeah. there's some of the political stuff, which is super interesting and complicated. And then there's some of the um, – the, I, I don't know if you want to call them like aesthetics, but things like costume and music, which are the best the MCU has ever produced. Okay, wait. Okay. Austin, I'm just going to yeah. stop you for a second. I found the story I was reading about. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's a little different than I thought, but it was a, a, it was a, a store called Dollarama that operates in Canada. And apparently some store – in Saint Leonard, in in um, in in Quebec, started destroying food, like opening bags of of candies and chips and like other goods that were like past their best before dates, before throwing them out, so people couldn't have them. And if that, if that was your plan in a movie, it'd be like, wow, we get it, they're the bad guys. But in real life, it's just how companies work yeah although Um, there are there are some other statistics here that i'm uh that i'm reading about how like 
in in the U.S. in 2010. Uh, grocery stores threw out 43 billion pounds of food worth about 46.7 billion dollars. Yeah, enough to end world hunger overnight, and also the tax cuts that were just passed in the American Congress are enough to end poverty seven times over. Like, mm-hmm. we, there's literally not a single problem in the world that can't be fixed with a snap of the finger if we choose not to. Cool. All right. So, so a guy put on a cat costume and punched other guys. Leon. <laughs> Um, yeah, you, you mentioned that, like, um, the movie was, like, eh, a movie, but the politics are, are interesting. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I completely agree with that assessment, but here's the thing. As political as I am and as fascinated by that aspect of movies as I am, the movie part, if the movie part isn't enough, like, no amount of, I agree with that, is going to be enough for me to like it. And I, I wish that weren't true and that, like, one aspect of a movie could be, like, that's enough. Um, that's enough for, for me. But it, for some reason, it just isn't. And I, I watched it. And even though, like, um, the politics are far more pointed uh, in this film than they are, ever are in any other Marvel movie that just sort of, like, brushes against issues. Um, uh, you, you've it, talked about this before, Leon. About how, like, bad movies with, with good messages, you can be like, eh, and even, like, good movies with bad messages, you're like, eh. Yeah, but this is, this is, uh... I want to call, I want to call this the, I want to call this the Thomas Bident. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, this is a, and I know, I know people, some people are really, really are going to hate me for saying this because some people think it's just an excellent film. On its own. And I'm, I'm not trying to be like a dick to people who love this movie because, you know, I, please follow your joy. But I think – but if for me, this is a eh movie, you know, with interesting stuff for a superhero movie. Um, and that's kind of how I feel about it. I'm really glad this movie exists, but I wasn't excited while watching it. And I wanted to be. Uh, so much, and it just—I don't know. Austin, you were—you're more enthusiastic about this. Mm-hmm. Why don't—why don't you give your take? Yeah, because 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 it's not interesting to hear someone say, eh. um, <laughs> <laughs> "I don't have—I don't have really strong uh, like uh, negative or positive feelings about it." I mean, we can talk about its politics, like like on its own, mm-hmm. but like as a movie, I just—I I don't want to just keep saying meh. Yeah, I mean, as a movie, it's a Marvel movie, so there's the first act where it kind of establishes who the characters are, and they kind of quip while they do hero stuff, and then the second act, there's a twist, and the bad guy is revealed, and then the the third act, uh, the people marshal their forces, and then they have a big blowout fight, and the hero wins. That's what Marvel movies are. What Brit- Oh, God, and the first two acts really drag, too, even for Marvel movies. I'm sorry, can I, I'm just going to stick my nose in here mm-hmm. real quick. Um, not all Marvel movies that drag that much. And it just, I don't know, there, it, there was a lot of start-stop, um, and it just, I got really tired of all the laboratory talking. Um, <laughs> I, I like laboratory talking when, like, they're, ta- they're, like, discussing, like, a cool science thing, like in science fiction, where they're discussing, like, an emerging technology. Um, they're talking about magic stuff, though, magic tech, so it's not, like, fascinating. It's like, look at what my magic tech can do. It's like, all right, cool. Thanks, thanks, Q. Um, but all right. I mean, for me, what break, makes those feel fresh is because we've never seen characters like that. It was like a teenage uh, yeah. inventor person who isn't like an asshole. That, that that's like the uh, genius inventor thing we've been fed for the last you know couple decades of you know culture is like oh the the tortured genius who's mean to everybody. It's your house. It's your Sherlock Holmes, and then like Shuri is just a nice teenage girl, and she owns and all her scenes are great she's extremely charismatic and that's a lot of the appeal of this movie is just likable people being likable um i i understand why you say it drags because there's a lot of setup because we haven't really explored any of these settings um like in the avengers you know you know the hulk you know thor like it's fine but like most people don't know black panther so you need some of that uh for me it, it was mostly fine but i actually thought about you while we were watching this movie because i was in a the absolutely packed theater sold out and there's a part where they're walking into this club in South Korea, and you can hear uh, The weekend and Kendrick Lamar 
they, they have a song together on their soundtrack <laughs> and it was like okay. electricity ran through the entire crowd it was just like okay. I, I, this all right this all right can, okay all right that's that's cool can you understand for someone who doesn't really know who they are why that means nothing exactly I, th- I literally thought like this is the coolest moment everyone here is fucking pumped for one syllable coming out of weekend's mouth and i bet leon has no idea what's going on right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's it's an incredible moment like he is like this generation is michael jackson like love him or hate him he's kind what? of divisive <laughs> yeah you you can't just look at the sales numbers he just straight up is you don't have to like him it's just a fact kendrick lamar is wins okay. all the grammys every year he's like one of the most vibrant artists of our time it, the sa- wait, I, wait 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 when you said this generation is michael jackson which one of the two were you talking about weekend Oh, okay. I, all right. I, I didn't know. All right. Go ahead. I mean, that's a de- it's a deliberate style choice. He's not trying to hide it. He's trying to be the new Michael Jackson. Um, oh, okay. And, like, I thought he was corny at first. I've warmed up on him. It's neither here nor there. He's more popular than you could possibly imagine. Um, like, the soundtrack, the costuming, like, all that stuff is, like, on such a another level that, you, like, you could feel it. Like, a coming storm. <laughs> like, everyone was vibing on it. It's, it's Watching it in a packed theater was, like, transformative. And yeah. that stuff I, I, I never got from I'm any sorry, of the other movies. I'm just saying, like, that, that X factor that I just don't think you got, Leon, I think is going to always be a difference between us. That's entirely fair. I, I, can't, I can't really argue, like, against that. But, like, there, there, there's, there are reasons. <sighs> okay, never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead with your thing. <laughs> okay. Well, well maybe, maybe we can double tail this together because I do have one – major criticism the th- the thing i walked away saying like oh dang i wish that had been better is there are a couple really bad effects shots uh most notably in the last fight when we have oh i hated the i hated the effects in general but what what was your um singular gripe i mean the final battle comes down to two cgi suits that look almost identical punching each other in the dark um it, it doesn't yeah it doesn't look good no it doesn't it did i mean i'm not like <laughs> that sounds harsh i'm just saying it doesn't look good it, and no, it's the same. It's the same problem with um, Transformers movies mm. when like two um, gray silver uh, guys are fighting each other. I'm like, wait, who's the bad guy? Um, you know, yeah. yeah. No, I feel I I agree with that. Um, my issue with the special effects in general is I think I've been uh, it, when it comes to like a- a action in Marvel movies, I think I've been spoiled by the Russo brothers how they film martial arts sequences. Um, Black Panther felt like. You know, like in the chase scene, that everything was kind of weightless, mm. um, especially after watching the great car chase scene in Winter Soldier, for example. Um, I don't know. Every, everyone felt um, like a cartoon, and I, I didn't really feel like anything had had any weight. Although I will say, the end of the chase scene, when uh, the woman is left basically with a seat mm-hmm. and the wheel... That was pretty funny. That was funny as hell. Uh, that was a solid visual gag that I think worked very well. That's the kind of thing that, that also is a cartoon, but transcended that in such a way that it was funny because it was in live action. Yeah. there. I mean, there's there's a lot of really good humor. There's a lot of just like that character is just amazing. Like I just would watch a whole movie of just her doing her thing. And that that's mm. the cool coolest shit, just seeing all that. Um, I'm, mm. I'm not out here trying to convince you of anything differently. Um, but I think the thing people are here to listen to us talk about is the politics because I guess it's, it's quite a thing. That would be a first <laughs> people actually being here to hear us listen to the politics <laughs> about a Marvel movie. Cause listen, that's like an entire subgenre is like, uh, of like yeah. YouTube con- content is like the, the real meaning of the dark night. And right, that right, stuff. right, right, right. <laughs> Uh, Leon, you wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> sure, of course. Um, yeah, I uh, I liked how mm, I liked that they just said the things that they were trying to say instead of like talk vaguely about a concept. Like in a in some movies, like when the um, someone is trying to make like a speech that's supposed to be. Um, as it relates to a country or as it relates to the people, they'll talk in um, vague terms, words like freedom. <laughs> and someone will say, we are doing this for freedom. And I'm like, that's neat, but that means so many different things to so many different people. <laughs> and so it, it's, it's not as simple as you think. Um, whereas uh, in Black Panther, they were like, you know, 
black people are shit on all over the world. Maybe we should do something about that. Um, that was like, that was the argument of the movie. What should be done about that? Um, one character says like, basically wage war. They didn't explicitly say let's wage war on all white people, but that was the implication a little um, I mean, the hot take in- coming out of this movie is the villain was right, and the scene you're referring to, he basically says, let's kill everyone in power. And yeah. the, way, the way he frames it makes it sound relatively reasonable, but then he follows up with, and their children. And then you go, oh yeah, villain. Mm, like, I, yeah, don't think, awesome. I don't think villain was right is really in the conversation. I think it's like villain recognizes power structures. <laughs> Maybe that's not as good as a headline. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Vi- vi- he he wasn't right because he wants to destroy, basically destroy the world, and hopefully he will be better at ruling it, a dictator. Um, but yeah, like the fact that he recognizes things, and w- but what that really means is the movie does, and ex- and says it out loud in what is basically a PG thirteen movie that is for for I wouldn't say for kids, but is acceptable for kids. Yeah, like, they um, say words like colonialism on screen. Yeah. They talk about, like, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. You're like, yeah, yeah, I went, I got into the, you know, the United States Army so I could kill people. And it's like, oh, I, like, oh, you're just gonna say that, Disney movie? Like, it was pretty... <laughs> I mean, I wanna, I don't wanna overstate it, because, you know, the least anyone could fucking do is be honest about what this country is. Mm. So, okay. you know, but it is pretty bold for a Disney movie to, to have the politics it does. And yeah. the, the, I'm going to, I want to take a weird direction to talk about this. It's, it's going to seem bad. Follow me. There was okay. a viral hot take around the, the release of this movie from Breitbart. Oh <laughs> yes. Jesus. <clears throat> yes. That yeah. black Panther was pro Trump. Because the hero is an isolationist and the villain is a globalist. Now, that's obviously a bad faith take. These are evil people with evil ideas who just want you to visit their website so they get money. That's – it's garbage. But I, I think it's important to explain why that's not true because I don't think people who aren't uh, as, like, deep in the fucking rabbit hole as we are, who aren't, like, you know – fucking woke and on the left or whatever i think i i think <laughs> don't call yourself woke. i'm doing it, like, it was like scare quotes it was scare quotes i i'm just saying i think a normal person a person in good faith could see, yeah. w- watch you know half the movie or whatever and get that message i don't think that's like a wild thing to come to uh if you're not really thinking about it and i think we've established people don't really think about their media that critically um you know whatever everyone has priorities in their life so i want to talk about yeah, if, what it actually you, says which is not that <laughs> Yeah, if you watch the first half of that movie, you might get that impression. And it, like, if it just ended there, and Black Panther stood up and says, "This was right," and then it just cut <laughs> to the credits, sure. But the whole point of the movie is that Black Panther like comes to the realization that yeah, he should do more to help the world, not not by dominating it um, or like waging war on children. Uh, but you know, like actually participating in the global community. That is, that is, uh, may- maybe, maybe the people who thought that didn't watch the, uh, mid credit sequence, <laughs> but there is something they like left before that where he's at the UN, like saying stuff. Um, but I, I, I suspect it's just, as you said, bad faith bullshit. I mean, it's not even the mid, the mid credit stuff, which is, I guess, more overtly political. It, to me, it's the scene yeah. before that where they go back to Oakland, where mm. he says, like, oh, we're going to use money to open up this, uh, you know, family housing in this low income yeah. neighborhood. Because at the end of the day, and this is going to sound like simplistic or naive, but I truly believe this, the only the only foundational road to universal equality is wealth redistribution. Yeah, that, well. Like this movie talks about like, oh, well, what can we do about the plight of African-Americans or what can we do about colonialism? What can we do about war? And they have, you know, the, the, <laughs> like the heroes like at the beginning is like, let's just hide in the forest. And the bad guys like, let's kill everybody. And the, the boring, real, true answer is rich people need to give their money to poor people. And that's how this movie ends is Black Panther yeah. realizes that. And that's the truth. <laughs> Like, that's just yeah. morally, ethically, philosophically, politically correct. Yeah, like, he, um, basically, the end of the movie is he says, oh, we have this basic magic metal um, that's, like, probably, we probably sell for a lot, and we could also use it to build things. Let's just, you know, 
help build things all over the world. Um, and that's, you know, that is the conclusion of the film, not nationalism good. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, pe- pe- that, that's that's the thing I, I was talking about uh, earlier. Like, I like that the movie is explicit in uh, its politics in a way that Marvel movies are, are often not. Um, like, one movie is about two different ideologies and it's never resolved for example and that was a, that was one of the better ones still um but yeah but that's the thing like even with a movie that says this is the thing we're about people want it to be want it to be something else enough that they will imprint their own ideas upon it that's why like saying saying a word like freedom can mean so many other things a marvel movie can mean so many th- things to people um because it's usually not um it usually doesn't like point to its uh, message enough. It, it doesn't. It, well, no. Let me rephrase that. It does, but usually that message is not so overtly political. Yeah, and I think the thing that people might miss, and uh, the thing that the people at Breitbart deliberately missed, is that America is not Wakanda, right? Obviously, because America has this hundred hundreds of years of history of colonizing other places of killing hundreds of millions of civilians of being this terrifying force that has an obligation a moral and you know ethical one to make up for that and to share with the world and wakanda has mostly been minding its own business you can argue that they have an ethical obligation to help other people but if their only option was violence i think that's a gray area that america does not have like we mm-hmm. overthrow like dozens of governments were like we're a terrifying like monstrous thing and wakanda is not and it's like it's it's not an equivalent thing at all and while i think the movie is correct in where it goes eventually um i think the fact that as many people uh agreed with the villain and a lot of what he said is really interesting because i he he's coming from a place of truth to get to a place of like e- evil basically which mm. is um it's a lot more nuanced than most Marvel villains, so. Okay. And then he punched guys. Ooh, which is cool. I guess. Yeah, Leon doesn't like punches anymore. He's too old for no, punches. No, no, I, 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 oh no, I, I love punches when the choreography is good. I don't like punches when everything feels kind of like weightless and um, I don't know. I, I just you know the the uh, I you. There's there's a kind of choreography I don't like, and part of it is just when like everyone everyone is like a computer, and that 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 is why the flips happen. Mm-hmm. But the the other kind of chore, uh, fight choreography I don't like is the kind of choreography where they cut as the impact happens, basically to hide the fact that they're not actually touching each other. Um, good martial arts choreography doesn't look like that. And you can like you can you can watch um you can you can watch uh, Winter Soldier or um, Civil War and it just looks like they're making impact. Mm-hmm. And you can watch Daredevil's Guardians season of- one did really well. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, you can watch something like Guardians of the Galaxy and someone will swing a, a scepter at someone's head and then it, it cuts to a different angle. Um, to hide the fact that obviously they're not hitting each other in the head with a big scepter, but there's, there are other ways you could have done that um, and not hurt someone's head. Um, and that's, I, I, I don't know. I, I, again, I, maybe I've been spoiled a bit um, by, by better uh, action choreography, but when I, you know, I watched black Panther and I watch these big epic like fight scenes, I'm like, no, no, it's like, like a, what do you call them? Video games, uh, cutscenes. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it looks like a, it looks like a cutscene. It, um, it mostly worked this. for me until the end. I gotta say that that one shot in the in South Korea inside the building uh, was just as a highlight for me. I think that really worked. But you know, okay. you're a professional film critic and I'm not. So what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional something. Um, or I'm a professional whatever it is I do. Um, yeah, how's YouTube? I heard it went off today. No, oh, uh, you the um for people who don't have a certain amount of subscribers and uh, and um, v- viewing hours, everything got demonetized for them. I'm fine. I do, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to like big shot over anyone or anything, but I do well enough that this was not a threat at all for me. But pe- some people I know who 
have channels and, you know, aspire to have larger channels are kind of like um, discouraged because even though they were only making a, a small amount of money from it, it's it's hard for it to continue when YouTube basically is, is telling them you're not good enough to even pay. Um, for your labor anymore, and I, I, I understand. I, I can understand why they do it because YouTube is not like sustainable in its current model. Um, it loses money; it doesn't get money. Um, I, I understand that, um, and they have to find a way for it to make money. I get it, but it doesn't make it suck any less for a lot of people. Um, so, eh, that's that's how I feel. That's the sound I make. Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing on Black Panther before we move on. The villain, um, played by, I believe, Michael B. Jordan is his name. Yep. Um, yep. Inc- incredibly charismatic. But during the whole oh, yeah. movie, my brother <laughs> kept leaning over to me and going, is that Nick Cannon? Is that, is that Nick Cannon? <laughs> what? Um, and then he decided, when he started doing villainous shit, my brother decided to call him Calamity Cannon. Um, it's a Breath of the what? Wild joke. Calamity Ganon okay. is the villain of Legend oh. of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is very funny if you knew that, and absolutely nonsense if you didn't. Um, oh, it is nonsense. Though. Yeah. But it was- yeah, <laughs> that's that's two out of three ruling for nonsense here. Yeah. It was very funny in the moment, so I was, <laughs> I was giggling a lot. Because, yeah, I mean, I, I like I see it, but... <laughs> anyway. Michael B. Jordan did a very good job. Everyone did. A uh, fucking uh, Andy Serkis th- put, turned in like a, an amazing performance. He seemed like he was having oh, a blast. Yeah. No, no, everyone, everyone did well in their roles. I, 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 I certainly won't um, knock anyone's uh, acting in this. In fact, um, like when I was watching, um, uh, Michael, Michael B. Jordan was great. Like he's like best villain since uh, Loki. Basically. I'm, I'm sad that he got cast as a villain. Because that means that we're not likely to see more of him. Because yeah. I always love to see Michael B. Jordan on screen. He is He's a phenomenal yeah. actor. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that in the car on the way back. I said, like, oh, I, I wish that we got more of him. Like, I, I bet I could, you know, see a whole other movie or two with that. And everyone else is like, oh, I feel like he, he did his thing. And I don't know. I think there's potential there, but I was overruled in the moment. So I'm interested to see if I, they, I, they, you know. Marvel. I'm so, like happens. I'm sorry. I I really liked Creed. Mm-hmm. Um, I really mm. liked him in Fruitvale Station. I didn't see Fantastic Four, so I'm just gonna pretend <laughs> that doesn't exist. Sure. Um, I will say uh, this. Um, Martin Freeman uh, does a real good American accent, and as I was watching him do that, I was like, why is Watson's American accent so good and Sherlock's American accent so garbage. Because um, because Martin Freeman had to learn how to do a fucking Minnesota accent when he did Fargo. And then yeah, the rest that, of them are just deep. easy. Like every other American accent <laughs> is just like no fucking problem. Yeah, fucking like I'm sorry, but like I still can't get over how bad that accent uh was from Benedict Cumberbatch. He's like I am Doctor Strange. <laughs> it's like he's like, what is in your mouth right now? What did you do to yourself to make you sound like that? Um, I couldn't even deal. Anyway, uh, that's not the only reason I hated that movie. It was basically trash. Um, it was a right. really good uh, bayonetta cutscene. Okay. Um, so those are our topics. We have a little time for uh, um, uh, questions. I guess I should talk about my thing. Okay. Um, Come on. Let's get. I'm sorry. Let's get weird, Leon. Um, I keep, I, I'm like, I keep, I've been debating all day whether or not I should bring this up because I don't know if, because I don't know what happened, so I don't know if this is a funny story or a really gross story. Um, well, uh, come on, let's like, let's hear it. We can always edit it yeah, out, right? That's true. Um, uh, okay, you guys can be my sounding board for this. If this does uh, end up in the show, um, for for new new listeners to the audience. Um, Renegade Cut pays all my bills, but I always like to have uh, something on the side just in case uh, something goes wrong. Um, like, if my car breaks down, I don't want to pay for it by credit. I would rather have cash in hand to just pay it off. What Leon so, is trying um, to say is that he's a repo officer. No. No. I, what I'm trying to say is that once a week, I have, like, a Joe job that I do out of town um, for, like, a few hours. And it, it doesn't pay very much, but it's a little extra just in case. What Leon and is I trying just... to say is that he's an organ career. 
Oh my god. So anyway, a part of uh, without going into details about what company I work for and what it actually is, uh, my job is basically going to people and getting the money that they owe uh, from them. And before Johnny says, what jo- Leon is trying to say is he works for the mafia. No, it's just, it's just a really boring thing where I knock on people's doors and say, hey, it's me. I was expected to come. And then they say, here is the m-. Then they give me the money or they sign a thing. And then I walk away. And that is, it's a really easy job. So it's no stress, which is why I'm still willing to do it, even though I don't need a second job. And that is what I do. But anyway. Um, I wasn't going to say the, the, that. The exact details are unimportant, is what I'm trying to say. The point is, I had um, one like uh, I've done I've done this transaction um, with people like a million times, and today, um, you know, I knocked on someone's door. It says, "Hey, it's me," and they said, and um, they he he had like the money uh, in his hand, um, and normally, when uh, a person hands you something, they put it in your hand. Um, as you know, that's the easiest and least terrible way to do it. Um, he didn't like tuck it into your pants belt, did he? Almost. He reached into my pocket and put it there. And when he did this, I said, I m- walked back and said, "Don't do that." And he says, "And he said, apologies." And then I walk to my car. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here's, here's a few reasons this might have happened. One, he's an idiot. Um, and sometimes dumb people do dumb things. Whatever. Other possibility. He's really socially awkward. And he did something socially awkward. Which is something I can understand. Although I would certainly never do that. Um, because there's a limit. Uh, to how awkward I am. Um, but it's possible. Other possibility. He spoke to me in a very thick accent. He's clearly not from around these parts. And maybe where he's from, that's just a thing. Um, it's possible. I hear some people, uh, I, I, I hear it like in um, certain countries, everyone just holds hands when they walk down the street. Um, it's, I forget what country it is. It's somewhere in the Middle East, and that's just a thing people do. And I think that's sweet. Uh, but we just don't do that here. Um, it, it would be considered socially awkward to do it here. It's not there. So whatever. Um, but the most obvious possibility of what just happened is that guy just sexually assaulted me in front of my face. Could be, and could be a phobia. Could be that he doesn't what? like touching people yeah he you can you he it was cash he could just put the he can just hold the end of his cash and just have me take the bill i i i I mean it's not impossible but that one doesn't particularly scan for me i well i mean Um, you know you were there so you would know better also like if he had like a germ phobia there's got to be more germs in my pocket than there are, like, on my cans Look, that I wash. I wouldn't know what you put in your pockets, Leon. Look, there's nothing special in my pockets, but clearly it's right next to my stuff. I mean, maybe it's um, trying like, to did... speed up the interaction. They're just like, here, take it, and then, I don't know, just, like, get rid of it, because they're just standing there awkwardly holding money, and you just want this to be over. I Look, there's a lot of ways to get this done. Did, look, he, look, I'm right... did he look uncomfortable? He looked uncomfortable when I said, don't do that. Um, but he didn't look uncomfortable right before. Right. Like, I can imagine um, myself if someone had, like, a, a, a breast pocket, right? And I, like, I, like, was late for, like, a fucking medical appointment or something, maybe sticking it in there and running, you know, to catch the bus or something. Like, a direst of circumstances, and, like, that was their version of that. That's where my brain's he at. He was not, look, all right, that's interesting, uh, but here's how I know he was not on his way to do something super important. He was wearing pajamas, no, like, I'm not saying what, not what saying time of day for was a very this? important date. I'm a saying fool. that's my version. I, I understand what you're saying, but there's like there's no instant there's no there's no like well maybe he was in a rush and my pocket was he thought was closer than an outstretched hand. Look, Leon, I have been in a hurry to have a nap before, but sure. What time of day was this? It was the early afternoon. Okay. 
All right. He was in. He he was a person in his pajamas waiting for me to arrive at his door, and then he put his hand into my pants. Okay, now to... like like it wasn't. He didn't just slip the bills in, but his hands went into the pants. You can't get. You can't properly place money into the into like I a pocket. Think, I with... think you'd be surprised what I could do with people's pants without actually He's not... getting into them. He's not. He was not that delicate. He was not a ninja, like gracefully. Like he was not doing a reverse pickpocket right. on me, where I wouldn't feel it happen. <clears throat> did this man have some kind of mustache? He did. <laughs> what is? What is that? I'm, I'm just. I'm just curious. Or was building a profile. Ex- was it excellently groomed or just? I didn't incidental? close enough. Hmm? It, he just he just had a mustache. He, I mean, um, he he, I wasn't looking close enough. I was mostly looking at his money and then looking at it travel into my pants. Okay, so obviously and, obviously it wasn't a mustache that that commanded your attention. So all right, no. Now he didn't command he didn't command my attention. Now the pants until, the until pants his, that you were wearing. Okay, are these they like, were black pants? Were they, sorry. They were black khaki pants. Black khaki pants. So, so front facing pockets. Then he didn't have to like reach around the side and like. No, they were just re- they were just regular pants. And he decided that in that moment it would be perfectly acceptable to put his hand into them. That's a little creepy. Did he dunk? Yeah, it's what? <laughs> Did he take a run up? No, <laughs> no, not. I'm saying like when he did it, like did his hands get the edge of the pocket like a rim of a basketball hoop? Did he say under his breath, "Kobe"? <laughs> is there any he basketball got in, involved? Is what I'm asking. He got in. He got in deep enough that when I immediately moved backwards, it stayed in the pocket. The hand. No, the money stayed in the pocket. It was not like he did not delicately set it near the rim no, of no, my pocket. No, no, like I mean, you know, but there's a big difference between, you know, like if he goes to put the money in the pocket and then you move back and the hand stays in the pocket. No. 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 I I made sure that his hand was not going to be there anymore. I mean, that that does kind of creep me out. I'm not going to lie to yeah. you. You know. And that's the thing. Like I'm, I'm, I, 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 I've been obsessing about this all day, because usually when someone does something uh, to take advantage of me, I get really angry about it. Mm-hmm. Um, because I used to be like a complete doormat, and now I, now when someone does something that I don't like, I very forcefully tell them about it, which is why I said in no uncertain terms, "Don't do that." And then he he like shouted apologies because like, what was like I I I could have stuck around to say why did you think that was okay was this is this a cultural thing or were you trying to touch parts of me like what 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 was your motive in this or was this just a dumb misunderstanding because here's the thing like I try I I started like racking my brain about like have I ever done anything quite like that because i would not have done i have never i've never gro- i've never groped anyone no leon but, the only okay. thing you've reached into is my heart okay thank you the i i've never groped anyone i've never done anything like that i not not only for obvious ethical reasons but also just ew um it's not it's not appealing to me at all the closest thing i could think of is when i was in high school in social studies class um uh i I basically I was crossing my legs and I crossed uh my right leg over my uh, left knee because that's usually how I sit. And at that exact moment, uh the teacher was walking um down the aisle and my uh shoe like bumped into his his crotch. Um and he said and he it was that but that was a funny accident. He said, "Uh that was almost a near fatal accident there, he said to me. And then I, I sort of laughed and said, I'm sorry. And he's like, it's fine. And then we moved on. My foot, I wasn't trying to foot massage his dick. It was just, it was just a goofy slip up. You know that some like, people pay good money for that though, right? I'm sure, he, I'm sure, but that's, that's what I'm trying to say. This was obviously an accident and I couldn't have gotten anything out of this. But this was like purposeful 
but I, it was it was purposeful because he he knew where he was going. But I'm wondering if this was purposeful, like this is just how I do, or is it purposeful, like I want to get close to that, Leon? And see what he does. Your brain is an infinite mystery to me. Do you? Um, what is there a version of this where the person doesn't apologize and like? I guess what I'm asking is, <laughs> would you have fought this dude? I want, I want to, I want to get my my brain around. Oh, the, oh, if is that, if, is that if like, he, was that your is that your next step, Austin? You're like, if I if I don't know. He, I'm just curious about what the difference for you meant. Like, is one like, oh, that was dumb, and the other is like, no, I like, I need to go get the cops involved or something. No, oh, oh, you mean you mean how how this could have shaken out if um if he if I was absolutely sure that he was putting his hand into my pocket because he wanted to touch my ball sack or at least dig around in the general vicinity, I would be angry enough to, yes, sort of like push him. Yeah, that it, it probably, it could have led to violence if I were sure that was happening. But in my mind, I was just so shocked by it that I was like, why is this happening? What 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 could have possibly precipitated this? I just very quickly the, my my gut reaction was to say don't do that, and then he started like making motions with his hands and like screaming the word apologies, and then I walked away from him feeling bad, and that was and I just I wanted to not be there, and so I left thinking about why that happened or was this what was the motive of this guy, and that's that's what happened. If if it were different, if it were like unambiguous in a way that I could immediately know that this is why this was happening. Yeah. I probably would have gotten angry enough to push this guy. Um, but that's not what happened. I'm sitting here on a podcast wondering why this happened to me today. Yeah. Um, I mean, no one could tell you how to feel or live, you know, it, your brain isn't rational. Things happen up in there. All I can say is from my own perspective, I yeah. like, feel bad about everything all the time as if it's a hundred percent my fault, no matter what, like I, if oh, I yeah. was in your shoes, I would have felt bad because I'd have been like, Oh, did, did, did I make my pocket, uh, <laughs> too, too enticing? Was I facing it no, to make it seem I, like that I, was the desired receptacle? No, I have, I have like, um, I think about times I, I am embarrassed all the time to the point that I can immediately recall them, which is why I spent all day thinking about all the times I have been socially awkward and were any of them even vaguely sexual. And the only one I could come up with one of the many thousands was that one uh, from high school, which was not vaguely sexual. It was just like goofy um, at best. Um I, but yeah, I'm of the uh, opinion but, here that both of you need to do things that are just way, way, way more embarrassing on a regular basis just to give yourself some perspective. Uh, I can't handle that. I would literally die if I did things more embarrassing than the things that I do that embarrass me right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I could not handle it. I'm, um, already, I'm not handling but, it super well, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm no. Yeah. Yeah, um and, and, and to answer to answer your your question, like why um like although I'm like also like a uncomfortable socially awkward person why i just reacted in a this is entirely your fault posture about that like i said like um i just for some reason like that's my reaction to things now when people are obviously bad to me um i just for some for reasons I, I don't need to get into right now but like when people are obviously taking advantage of me or doing something bad to me i just react in a in a way that to make them stop immediately. Like, for example, um, uh, if I, 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 I parked my car um, on, on the sidewalk uh, a, a while, while back and um, someone uh, and it, uh, at, in a nearby house kind of shouted at me and said, like, two spots. And and I, I was like, what do you mean? And, he, and then eventually, as I got closer to him, he, he started shouting and he says, two spots, you're taking up two spots. And if this happened like a few years ago, I would be like, OK. And I, I probably would just, you know, immediately, um, you know, rectify the situation because in my mind, like this, like uh, I will feel better feeling bad about this than I would 
engaging this person in an argument. But this happened recently. So I said, you know, you could talk nicer to me, actually. If you want me to do something for you, you can say please to me because we are complete strangers. So how about you ask me nicely and I will do this thing for you. And then he paused for a moment and says, can you do this? And I said, sure, since you asked nicely. And then I moved my car. So that's what I, I'm, I'm like now because I just, I had, I have been walked over too many times and I, I, at some point I snapped and I didn't realize I did. I, it just sort of happened. And that's just kind of the way I am right now. So when this guy put his hand into my pants, instead of being like, um, I have to go, which is definitely what I would have done a few years ago. I just kind of got in his face and I was like, don't do that. And then he didn't anymore. And I hope he never does that again. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that was what happened to me today. I feel really weird about it. Um, and uncomfortable and I'm bothered by the fact that I can't dis I'll never really discover what happened, whether this was just like a stupid thing that happened or in actual there, or someone sexually assaulted me. That's a really bad feeling to have because I don't know whether or not to think this is funny or to be angry. Uh, well, and I, I don't like I don't like that feeling like, at all. Leon, it's like it's okay to be confused about it in the first place. I, I, I am. <laughs> no, that's like this is this is the thing. Is that like you know it, it, like any situation in life whatsoever? It's like it's okay to feel a certain way about it, one way or another. You can be angry about it, and you can also be confused about it. You can, you know, like it 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 doesn't. It doesn't change what happened. You're not. You're not. Yeah making a summary judgment, you know, okay. you're, you're not convicting a man unjustly of a crime he didn't commit. You can very easily just say, this experience made me really uncomfortable. I'm really angry that it happened because I feel disrespected that, that my boundaries were crossed over, even if the person doing them may not have thought they were crossing boundaries. Like your emotional reaction to the situation is justified no matter what it is like that's that's okay like things can make you angry and things can make you confused and things can make you sad and things can make you happy like what what comes after that is what we do about the emotion how we act upon it how we confront it how we accept it deal with it you know whatever so it is true that you like you may never know what this man's intentions actually were Mm -hmm. that doesn't really matter if he made you uncomfortable you feel uncomfortable and and if that makes you angry then that makes you angry you're not you're not unjust you're not being unfair in saying that okay like it, i just went accepting your own emotional reaction to the situation is is like <sighs> the, the way forward you know, like it's it's okay to be angry with it, even if it was an accident. You know, you don't have to go back to his house, knock on his door, and yell at him. I could. I still have his address. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to. Um, yeah, the the, the reason it, it's it's sort of like um like bothering me all day is because like I, I like I I don't know if I overreacted, but yeah, like talking it out, like I, I feel like I did a, a reasonable reaction to that. Um, all right. Uh, I just wanted to bounce that off you guys, uh, because it's all I can think about today. Uh, I didn't like that at all. Uh, I didn't like that that happened. So, um, another thing I thought about, and maybe this shouldn't matter. Um, but like I started thinking like there there are like uh there are women who also work for the company, and if like a woman came in uh to um where we are and said you know hey hey Leon, this thing just happened to me, and then she described exactly what um happened like happened to me i would i would i would assume that he was being a creep because I think statistically speaking there's yeah. obvious more evidence of men being creeps to women, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, I know. I, um, there was, you know, like I read a, I, I read a, a newspaper article just today about how like Harvard, um, or some Ivy League school has decided to ban, um, men's only gender clubs. Hmm. And I was like, 
that's not going to stick, and it's a bad idea because you've got like you know gay men coming out support groups and like uh, uh, trans point. men support groups and things like that. You know, like there's there's a lot of reasons why you know men only safe spaces would exist, but it's like, yeah, you know. I can I can see where the launching point for deciding to do that would seem like a really sensible idea. Mm, um, yeah. So yeah, it, you know, if it was a if it was a man doing something to a woman, unfortunately, history history dictates a pattern of behavior. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, my only uh, my only uh, positive to to that possible that idea for the colleges is I don't know anything that takes away stuff from men is good no um <laughs> sorry i'm kidding i'm kidding uh don't don't, don't at me uh okay so um, <laughs> do you guys want to do questions austin i'm, you, I'm ready you, you you're you hold the question <laughs> so this is really more this is really more a question for you okay you ready yeah i, c- I couldn't yeah. hurt um hmm i was just thinking um we should all have our own like personal hamster balls and it's just like no one's allowed in unless they have the very specific 150 digit code. It's just like <laughs> lock this shit down. Um, Silent Wind of Doom asks: Is Je- is Jeff Jarrett getting into the Hall of Fame? Not the most unbelievable induction ever. Parentheses wrestling. Please tell me this means no, something. <laughs> I don't think it's un- I don't think it's uh, particularly unbelievable. Every here, here's the thing: like Jeff Jarrett left uh, WWE under um, what I think what Vince McMahon would think are bad circumstances um i'll explain what they are in a, in a minute um and then he uh was a big star in their competition and then he created new competition for them by helping found um a new company uh but here's the thing um about that everyone always comes back you know everyone who has like bad blood with vince with with like a couple exceptions um if they're big enough star they will always be brought back for something um, that's it's just a weird thing that happens in that company. Um, Paul Hogan is eventually going to come back, even though they like expelled him and like scorched him from their history uh, due to uh, some racial comments he made. Um, it's only a matter of time before he does something in WWE again. It's it just is once it becomes um, once the financial uh, risk is small and the financial benefit is high for them, they will lose their convenient morals about the whole situation, and he will. Um, as it pertains to Jarrett, um, it's like, he, you know, he, he deserves it. You know, he, he was a very, uh, you know, he was a very good heel uh, back in the day. Um, he was a really good heel outside of WWE as well in, uh, in WCW. Um, the, the thing that... Um, that he did that made Vince angry for him uh, about him for like forever um, is this. And I think it's reasonable. Um, Jeff Jarrett um, was intercontinental champion in WWE, um, uh, which means he's like king of the mid card. Um, So it's like, it's like a, it's like a decent position to be in. And his contract was coming up and he wanted to go to WCW. Um, And, Vince says, yeah, but rather than just, you know, strip you of the title or, you know, make you lose it on a house show or something, we want to do this, you know, big thing where you lose the title to uh, this wrestler. Jarrett says, well, at that time, I won't be under contract, so I'm obviously not going to do that. I'm not going to work for free for you. Um, So I'll do it, but you have to pay me X amount of money. And X amount of money ended up being like a sizable amount of money. So basically Jeff says, I don't work for free pay me this and I'll do it. If not, then, you know, I'm my contract will be up and I'll just go work somewhere else. You know, I am a worker. You don't own me. Um, and some people like, um, frame that differently. Like Jeff Jarrett held up Vince McMahon for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, no, he didn't. His contract was up and he, you know, if they, he, he, you know, <laughs> that's all there is to it. He didn't have to stay. He said, I'll stay if you give me some money. And then they did. Um, but that, that like, there's, like, this mentality, like, people who are, like, like um, corporate apologists 
who like say like, "Whoa, he shouldn't have done that. He should have been loyal." It's like, "Fuck you." He's a worker. He's there to his 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 labor is not free. It's an exchange of of services. He does something for you, and you pay him. Um, I think Jeff Jarrett did nothing wrong. Um, he's done he's he's done some bad things that were not that, but that was not it. That was fine to me. Um, but that was like the big contention between them for so long um, because Vince McMahon had <laughs> ended up paying him more money than I guess Vince thought he was worth. And that's it. Um, yeah, I don't think it's uh, preposterous that he's in, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. I think he deserves it, and that's it. Cool. <laughs> Next question: Molly McDade asks opinion on Saru in Star Trek Trek Discovery S A R U uh, parentheses and Doug Jones in general. I'd, oh, I'd, he's my fa- he's my favorite character. I I love Doug Jones in just in fucking everything he does he's he's one of like the most amazing physical actors of our time i've never seen star trek discovery but he's in hellboy which is very good and he's the fawn in pan's labyrinth one of the best movies ever made not just the fawn but also the pale man oh fuck he owns yeah no he's (laughs) he's really good (laughs) physique like it's it's kind of sad to say but i like Physique and physical acting um, in in sort of like the, the modern era of filmmaking is like incredibly underrated because people just automatically default to to like CG or like you know and not not CG created characters but like but like modified CG presentations and things like that and when an actor like demonstrates like a truly just intuitive physical interpretation of a character or presentation of a character it is like it is so artful and just like you can see the years of training that these people have gone through to be able to actually be in tune with their body and and be in touch with what what body language expresses and represents and things like that i mean maybe this is just like the old theater student in me talking but like, uh, just just like, even just the smallest little gestures and things like that. The way a person, the way a character will manipulate their hands when while trying to explain something or whatever, can just add so much unspoken character to a script or a scene. And like, and like in uh, in Pan's Labyrinth, Doug Jones had to learn all of his lines phonetically. He didn't even speak the language. He didn't even speak. Um, I want to say Spanish, but I have a like vague. I believe so. Vague uh, uh, recollection of it being like possibly por- Portuguese. It's been years since I've seen uh, Pan's Labyrinth. But yeah, so like he didn't even he didn't even know what he was talking about. All phonetic. And while maintaining these, like, crazy costumes that he had to wear. Like, when he was resting as Fawn, they had to, like, build... They had to build a chair rig for him to, like, sit down on. Because he couldn't sit down on a regular chair. And, yeah, I mean, if you can watch... If you can watch those three movies, Pan's Labyrinth, Hellboy, and, and, and Star Trek Discovery, and not see... Saru and be like, wow, that's a fucking actor, then you're obviously not watching close enough. Also, just as the character, pretty dope. Yeah, Saru's so uh, so my favorite character uh, on the series, um, full of really uh, cool characters. Um, I'm kind of like disappointed that he's just not going to be the captain now. Apparently they're going to pick up a new captain. Um, I thought that would have been cool. But that's that's okay. He, so long as he's still around. Okie dokie. Uh, next question. Samuel HGW asks, I f- Austin, I feel like the comic series Saga is right up your alley. Has anyone on the show read it? I've heard good things if I'm thinking of the right series. Have you, either of you read Saga? No. I believe it, I believe it's um, written by uh, Brian K. Vaughn, though. And I was a big fan of his when I used to read comic books. But no, uh, that, that Saga ha- happened... After I stopped reading comic books, I think. Uh, I haven't I haven't read it either. But if, if Brian K. Vaughn's the guy who did, well, is that Why the Last Man? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I really, uh, I Machina. really, really, really love Why the Last Man. I have all of them, uh, the 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 um, novels in hardcover. So I wouldn't be surprised if I liked it. But 
no, I, I have not. I have not read it. Next question. Saritha asks, Leon, who do you think will win this Elimination Chamber match at this Sunday's PPV? Prentice Wrestling. Uh, I, was, I wanted to say it this time. <laughs> wrestling. Um, well, first of all. Wrestling. Um, I th- <laughs> um, they, they didn't specify which one because there's two. Oh, sh- there's the men's elimination. There's men's elimination chamber, and then there's the first ever women's elimination chamber. Um, I don't. Uh, I mean, the men's elimination chamber is definitely going to be win, uh, won by Roman Reigns because they've been setting up uh, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns for WrestleMania all year, and everyone knows that. Um, it would be absurd if he were not to win. Um, so it's going to happen. Um, as for uh, the women's, I don't know. They've left that a little. Um, more open art to our imaginations, so that's cool, I guess. Um, I suspect, though, that Alexa Bliss will just retain, and then she and uh, Nia Jax will um, be their uh, the Mania match. And that's it. Wrestle stuff. Uh, next question. Yeah, Dar- it is. <laughs> Dark Kent Reltnark asks, Austin, would you like to become a judge? Um, theoretically, yes. I think I'd be pretty good at it. Uh, practically, it's a either Austin. No- yeah, you're already such a judge. I'm very judgy. <laughs> um, it, it's an appointed or elected position, depending on which what kind of judge. Uh, I don't have any political connections. I don't know anybody with money. I don't know how to campaign. It, the chances are astronomically low. So it's it's not really a practical thing. I am not at all trying to do that. But theoretically, if I could live in like a district with only people who listen to my podcast, if we could get those <laughs> together, and that could be the electorate, then yeah, I think I'd be Austin, pretty good. Yeah, I got one word for you. Gerrymandering. <laughs> that would be the best district. It would go like it's all around the globe, and it would just be like the thinnest possible slice of like a bunch of different places. Uh, speaking of which, second question from Dark Ant Reltnark. Um, is it where is it? Here it is. Is it weird that my country doesn't use juries at all? I don't know what country that is specifically, but I think you'd be surprised. Maybe everyone would be surprised to find out that juries. Um, it's it sounds democratic, but the actual data on juries is pretty disheartening. Um, they don't really know what they're doing. They ignore a lot of stuff they are told to do specifically. Uh, they're pretty racist. Um, I'm sorry, we're talking about democracy in general, aren't we? <laughs> it's weirdly applicable <laughs> across the board. I'm not saying it, it's like, – it might be, still be the better system than the alternative, which is just letting like rich white guys decide stuff, which is the, the judge system, I guess. <clears throat> I don't know that there is a good system because you always are going to have to have people who make decisions and people are butts. So I don't know if it's weird that your country doesn't use a jury. I think it's weird that – any of our systems function at all. <laughs> I think that's kind of wild that we act, got this function. Eh. Man, do you ever just think about how right now we are talking from just like hundreds of miles away through like weird bits of metal that have been arranged in certain ways? And it's just look, like, it's a miracle. It's cool. Look, Austin, all I'm trying to say is, have you ever seen a sun die? Like a star? Have you ever seen it die? No. No. Do you know why? Happens over a long period of time. Okay. It doesn't just it, it doesn't just be like, well, ah, that's it, I'm done. It's like, wow, things are getting worse. Wow, things are still getting worse. Things <laughs> are a lot worse now. Things are really, really bad. Up, oh, that's it, we're done. I'm gonna have to specifically come armed next episode with like nothing but super positive stuff to talk about to counteract this because this show is I gonna be a total drag. Challenge you to do that. Okay, cool. Well, why do I make more work for myself? Um, okay, we're running a little on time. I'm gonna do this one as quickly as possible. Eugene T asks, "To whom does a human body belong after its death?" Is it, a, is it the state, closest relative, uh, question mark? Um, legally speaking, nobody owns a, a corpse. Um, when you die, like, it, you're, you have like your last will or the executor of your state like, decides what – if you don't leave explicit instructions, right? If you want to be like cremated or buried in a certain place. Um, if you don't um, – yeah. Austin. Yeah. I mm-hmm. am an organ donor. So am I. Me too. Yeah, we all are. Cool. Oh, neat. But that was a decision you made – because you yeah. have agency over your own body, and that would somebody else would just be carrying out your wishes. Yeah, but but even yeah. still, yeah. like I'm, I mean, you can't own something after you die, right? 
And if uh, like if a human body is to be considered some amalgam of its parts, mm-hmm. then like at that point in time, my kidney technically belongs to somebody else. Yeah, I mean, this is where uh, property rights and human beings uh, intersect in uncomfortable ways. We talked about that case before yeah. where a uh, doc took some stuff out of a guy and then like found some stuff out about it, patented it, made a billion dollars. The guy didn't get anything. So yeah. like it, you can't like own people like in the property if you have enough sense. money and you live in the right country mm. yes Jesus. you can but you can assert a th- like a possessory authority over people's stuff and uh, yes if you do get an organ transplant it does belong to you in a sense it, the how meaningful that sense is is complicated but i guess the, i think the question is like do, you, do when you die does the state own your body no and neither does your family own it in a in a real sense. They just carry out your last will and testament or the whatever the default rule is in your state for disposing of your remains, which might be donation. So somebody somebody is assigned guardianship. It's like it's bi- it's bio waste. It's like who whose responsibility? It's not ownership, it's responsibility. Um yeah, there's weird. We ha- someone asked a question uh And yet yeah. And yet, though, Austin, yeah. you can steal a body. Yeah. Not that I've been mm. caught doing it. I would hope not. Uh, what's a weird thing is uh, Benj, B-E-N-J, asked a question about uh, eating meat in the like meat markets and stuff. Like, that thing we talked about earlier about chickens. Like, a very like it's a weird coincidence. I didn't read this question beforehand. So we, we did talk about that. Interesting. Um, mm. Let's see here. So, like, surely somebody must have possession of your body if if it can be stolen. Yeah, so I think it, traditionally, when we're talking about body theft, I guess we're just in this co- topic now. Uh, that was actually a really common thing. And uh, I, I want to say Victorian. I might be misremembering. But, like, in, during times when people weren't really yeah, allowed Vic- to... Yeah, Victorian, the Death Watch Beatles. Yeah, people weren't really allowed to do, like, you know, doctor work to, like, practice surgery or explore the human body to find out how it worked and stuff. So that there was, like, a whole industry of stealing bodies. And in that time, I think – I'm not familiar with British law, but I, I assume that because Undertaker was, like, a full-time, like, possession, uh, position and, like, was, like, an important thing that maybe in some legal sense the body belonged to them. But just, like, ownership of bodies is weird and it go, flies against what – we think property rights should be doing so i mean in this country people owned other people for a long time who know like it's all, all of it's yeah. fucking wild no one knows i think what it really comes down to is there's not much money to be made in a dead body so no one really worries about it austin you're just not selling to the right people christ on a cracker yeah. um we have time for like one more um Hmm. I'm trying to find a. Here's the thing. While I'm looking through my social media, um, there's a lot of clips of Mark Rubio getting owned by these uh, Parkland uh, kids. Um, <laughs> yeah. Real quick, I, this might be a downer, but um, obviously I live in Tallahassee, um, which is yeah. where the the state capital is. So the the peop- the survivors of the Parkland shooting are here and have been here all day. And there've been like marches. Like the city is uh, undergoing some stuff yeah. right now. It might. My roommate's sister go goes to Parkland. Uh, one of one of her oh. friends was killed. Like this has Jesus. been extremely like I like the Florida State University was shot up a couple of years ago. Like I could not be closer to this whole thing. It's happening right now, all around me, all the time. We haven't really talked about it, and I think that's because I think everyone knows where we stand. Like if you listen to this show, yeah. you should not be surprised about any of that. And so it, it's almost not worth talking about, but it, it also is because. Uh, if this any of this America democracy any of this has any chance, uh, the next generation really has to do exactly what they're doing, which is tell these old fucks to shove it, and they're doing it right now. And it's it's it, that is something that brings me hope and joy and optimism. Okay, well, I'm just gonna take a moment to appreciate it. Okay. <sighs> also, fuck Rick Scott, man, he sucks. Okay. Sucks just a lot. Just a whole yeah. lot. Which one is Rick Scott? Florida governor. He's the governor. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. The, he said he didn't have time to meet with uh, the survivors, and they stood outside his office for, like, hours until he gave them, I think, 20 minutes or something. What a, He's yeah. just an f- absolute fucking knob. 
Um, okay, so on the way out, Cyrith asks, what is the evilest corporation slash industry in America? Um, I know there's no way to answer that conclusively, but I've been thinking about this recently because in the current season of Dice Funk, uh, like, the premise is that, like, e- cor- like, an evil corporation is their enemy and they're fighting them. And I think it's very easy to think, like, oh, Austin, that communist, he just made the, ca- the capitalist evil and they're so exaggerated and shooting guns and stuff. But... Besides the the real obvious stuff like the the British uh, you know imperialist tea company thing was, and also the spice trade the slave trade just like capitalism like literally killing millions of people across the world uh, something I've been reading a, about recently that I don't think many people know about do you guys know about the banana wars? Yep, I I've heard of that, uh, but I can't remember the specifics. At all. I I really if you guys get the time just peruse some articles about the banana wars because America. The country we live in uh, spent a lot of time and money uh, conducting military operations in Cuba, Panama, Honduras, Nicaragua, Mexico, Mm -hmm. Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, killing untold amount of people just so that American companies could control the banana trade. Uh, I I believe, Austin, mm -hmm. that there's a very, very popular, like term Mm -hmm. that came out of the banana wars that people might be a little more familiar with well because we overthrew most of those governments and their new governments are called banana republics (sighs) um so yeah that's what 36 years of overthrowing south american governments uh circumventing their democracies slaughtering their people uh, it, so that companies could uh, have fruit monopolies, which is not a great yeah. note to end on it. But if you ever listen to the, my other show and think like, wow, he's really exaggerating by making uh, the bad guys shoot a gun, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is a thing. <laughs> it's just like, you, like the truth is so fucking wild. I bet it's, it has to sound unbelievable, right? What, like, what, really, what really fucks me up about like the end game of like of the banana wars and the banana republic saga and things like that is what is happening to these monoculture crops now mm. like bananas are should pretty much be on an endangered species list at this point in time yeah a because, lot of our fruit is just fucking sterile yeah because uh, america has basically like this one particular strain of banana, they were like, it's the only one that sells! So, like, they they gutted crops. They gutted, like, the entire, like, a, a basically genetic database of bananas to plant this one banana. And now it's just getting destroyed. <laughs> It's a really good sign that in the same episode that we discussed, like, the our 90% of our meat going away, we're also just talking about, like, wholesale crop destruction, and also there's global warming, and... Industrialized farming is a scam! Got, I, I, um, Leon, quick, find something else positive to go out on. <laughs> oh, I, I, I can't. I was about to say that the most, one of the most evil companies in America is Coca-Cola because they funded Colombian death squads for over uh, a decade to uh, murder um, union leaders mm-hmm. uh, in Colombia. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I mean, mean, Nestle goes I mean, into uh, villages and like Indian stuff and basically steals all mm-hmm. their water. They've gone into Canada and tried to steal all our water because, you know, NAFTA. Mm-hmm. I'm sick and tired of fucking cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not giving, you're not giving anything back. This is like late stage capitalism, desperate. Oh, look, man, if I leave my computer on all day and destroy the environment, I can make money. It. By the way, I realized I realized when I uh, said that thing about uh, Colombian death squads, it sounds like a wacky conspiracy theory. It's like it's known. It's like accepted by journalists who investigate this. If you if you Google it, you will find not just on like wackadoo websites. Yeah, that, but, that's like, what I'm saying. Um, when I Guardian. when I say like the banana wars, America fought to overthrow foreign governments. It sounds like idiocy. It's but right. it's like it's just real, and that's that. I'm constantly worried. I'm so self conscious this season of Dice Funk because it's more realistic and i'm constantly getting people uh not that like they're not being mean about it they're just like expressing disbelief at some of the ideas we're broaching and it's just like dog it's a hundred times worse and that is to say nothing of the bananas wars that (laughs) the united states has been in for different reasons yeah okay hold on i'm gonna find something good give me a second wait 
Sure. I got a date this weekend. Oh shit, we That's found good. it. Yeah. What's up? Any any deets or is that just uh Not uh, not not yet. We've been we've been we've been talking like crazy and she's into dad rock. Hell yes. Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, that's a good segue. I listened to uh, Ezra Furman's uh, Transangelic Exodus. And, and how much did you love it? I Listen, you've brought some bangers before, but I think this is like top three. Like there's like Nice, Nice, Very Nice and uh, Heartbreaking Bravery, which are like, oh, I'm going to listen to these for the rest of my life. I think it might be like thir- third on that list. It, it's pretty it's fucking amazing. It's like it's it's my album of the year so far, and it's only fucking two months in. Yeah, I've been thinking about the line Babylon in exile, which is like – one of my favorite biblical puns I've heard in music in a long time that owns. Mm-hmm. I've also just in public having to stop myself from just saying under my breath, suck the blood from my wound, <laughs> 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 which uh, probably is not a socially acceptable thing to say out loud. Uh, it's it. Yeah, it owns. It rules. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. Um, I just want to say one more thing. Uh, someone edited Marco Rubio's uh, Wikipedia page <laughs> immediately, <laughs> immediately, Immediately after uh, he got destroyed by children to say that uh, died February 21st, 2018. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, okay. So that's that's good. We can leave. Anything you guys want to say right before we go? Yeah, we endured. Repeal yeah. the Second Amendment. Bye. Bye.